Welcome back to Carson Tate's video log. And Jane just told me she's never going to write books again. <laughs> I'm here with Jane Fletcher, author of, uh, you know, how many books now? Ten. Ten books. Wow, can I like touch you and sizzle? Um, so, ten books and you're never going to write a book again? Is that what no, you just no, told me? No, no, I just... <laughs> I'll say I've been a little bit remiss in writing recently, but I have got a new book planned that I'm going to be starting on once I get back to the UK. And tell us about it. It's going to be another one in the Salerno series. Excellent. So, come on. I'm spill. planning on telling, and in a style that one of my readers hate, I'm going to jump back in time. So I'm actually planning on writing a story that's going to take place ten years before the Temple at Landfall. And it's going to be the story of Gina Renamed and the start of the Heretics. Oh, excellent. And then fill in that bit in the history of the world. So, do your readers really hate that? I don't Some hate of them it. do. Some of them do. Some readers are very keen on reading things in order. Once they've actually started journey, once they start reading the series, they'll realise that what I say is true. It that really doesn't matter. It's absolutely what order true. You go for it. Absolutely true. I, I still recommend the Temple at Landfall first because that explains the world best. And once you've read that, you'll understand who the guards are, why, the, who the sisterhood are, everything else, and every other book will make sense. Having said that, I've known people who've read them in different orders, um, who've equally. Um, got different things from it. Uh, say uh, that people who read like the Wars of Western Fall first, but the, the, the ca main character, they'll actually bond with her that much more if they don't know where she's wrong. <laughs> okay, you know, seriously, that makes a lot of sense. I read them the first time the way you recommend, and then I've gone back occasionally and just picked one up just to read it. You know, yeah. just to revisit those characters. So, um, so, so we're going back to Gina. So I, I like when people fill in the backstory mm -hmm. like that. So was that an idea you always had, or was it an idea you thought of just because you thought that would be interesting for your readers? It's actually usually the ideas come to me when I'm editing. And usually I'm, I'm going over the book for the umpteenth time, and suddenly I'll read a paragraph and think, hey, that's, you know. And so I was um, rereading the bit where Gina's explained to Kim about how she found the heretics, and I'm thinking, yeah, well, I wonder how she really did that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and did she tell you, or you just made it up? I made it up. Okay. <laughs> Are there voices in your head? <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and that goes back to what you always do. Your characters don't boss you around, you boss around your characters. I boss my characters around, yeah. Okay, well. Bit of a tough hat with Gina, because she's quite a bossy sort of person. I was going to say, so, she has a strong personality. But, um, but equally enough, I've got, in some ways, I've got myself constrained on plot, in that I've always... You're stuck with what happened. <laughs> yeah, I've always said, you know, I've given that some of her back history, how she got to where she is. But um, it is actually had to happen changing quite a bit, how she became the person that she is in the Temple at Landfall. Okay, well, do you have like a working title for that? Uh, I've got temp at the moment I'm calling it The Heretic in the Library, but it could be that I've watched too many episodes of Bones recently. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. Could be. So, so, so you're working on that now, so you don't really have an idea of when that might be done? Um, I don't, I am... It's not going to be this year. Okay, so maybe 2012. Maybe 2012, but it's, it's up to Rad. Because I may, I may submit the proposal, full proposal to Rad, and she may throw her hands up in horror and say, "No, no, you can't write that story. Go write something else." Well, I know you know. You, most people probably think you're just sitting around doing nothing, but you are getting ready to become civilized. Is that I true? I'm going to become civilized in June. Yeah, Joni is coming across the pond to live with me. And, uh, Congratulations. Yeah, we're civil partner. So you're busy You're busy with that. No wonder yeah. you're not writing. You're doing real life stuff. Real life romance. <laughs> Actually, I'm kind of hoping at the moment, I've started the new job, which has taken up a lot of time, but also like you know, webcamming with Joni a couple hours each night. So When you actually live in the same place. I'm, I'm hoping you know, it will free up a couple extra hours a day to, to write. Excellent. Well, congratulations. We're very Thank happy you. for you and Joni. And we're looking forward to the next book in the Lowermouth series. And Selena. Selena, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, well, well, how about Lowermouth? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that subtle little, you know, hint? Yeah. Maybe that another one in that? <laughs> maybe? Yes, maybe? Maybe. Okay. All right. All right. Well, this is Jane Fletcher. We're in sunny Palm Springs for the fifth annual Book Festival, Bold Strokes Book Festival, and thanks Jane for joining us. Congratulations again. Carson Tate's Video Log signing out. Cheers. <laughs>